Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. It has been a couple of years since we worked with these fan motors converted to an alternator. It's been that long. Wow. Six years really goes fast. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert one of these within less than like two minutes into an alternator. Now, you will need a bridge rectifier, and the video that we did. I guess six years ago, we'll show you why and why the AC current that comes out of this is more or less useless unless you use a bridge rectifier to convert it to DC. So that video, the link is below, but we're going to do this really fast. So this is one of the motors we have on our website, greenpowerscience.com. Very simple, six coil design. This is a typical fan motor like you get at Walmart, Walgreens, whatever three-speed box fan. A little bit more complex, less power. We're going to put this off to the side. I'll show you that in a future video, but for right now, these are the way to get the most power. We have about six or seven hundred of these in this two-wire design, single speed, but I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to show you how to convert this real rapidly, and because you have um, different wires, you can use three bridge rectifiers to increase the power. This will produce about 70 volts at one amp, which is roughly 70 watts. Through a bridge rectifier, you can get about 70 watts of power out of it. Pull the cover off. So once you pull the cover off, you will have this, which is the squirrel cage rotor. This is part of an induction motor, so if you just spin a regular motor, it will not produce any electricity. A little bit, but you have to get this excited. So this is a regular vise. This goes in here like this. These are like uh, conduit. You can use PVC if you want. But what you want to do is put both of them on the back side of this. Press this off of there. It was pressed on, so it should press off you may need an extra piece of pipe for your vise to give you leverage, but this should just pop right off. And it should go right now. Point, there it is. Once you see that, it should come right off and we need this. We need whatever fell off of there little Teflon things and we've got this right now so there is a threaded portion right here I'll zoom in on it and the reason that it's good to have this is sometimes they do do these at weird sizes so in the previous video we just discarded this and used this as a top or whatever but so this kind of useless I've seen people drill holes in these here put magnet this shit's a pain in the ass to work with, so we're going to put that in front of a Fresnel lens. For right, for right now, we're going to use this. This is a 2-inch hex steel bar. We had a company cut them for us, so they are the perfect size for this. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Six coils works perfectly. So we need to put a hole in the middle of this, right down the center. So to find the perfect center, all you need to do is to put a straight edge, like this razor blade, right? A ruler's kind of too thick, so we've got our center. Now you take a regular small 1 8 inch drill bit. Go right down the middle. center by the way don't hold that with your hand so we've got a 3 8 inch hole right down the middle so at 3 8 of an inch this should fit in there snugly and it does and it goes right down to the threading area so we're going to so we're going to flip this around, open our thing, open our squeezy device up, 
also known as a vise, put it in there and tighten it down. Now you may need a piece of steel pipe to do this to give you more leverage over here. So if you have a good $30 vise, this works. We're going to pull this down across the threaded part so that instead of putting it on this side to push it off we're using it over here to pu push it on and I'll zoom in and show you what's happening on these so when they push this you'll notice that it closes the gap and you want it to cover all the threads so we're using the same rotor bar or rod or whatever Ah, so we've got this done. Ta-da! That should fit in there. So because this came from there, it's locked in. No need to add screws or anything. It's not going anywhere. And it spins nicely. So what we need to do now is add magnets to this. You want to put a magnet. These are one half inch by one inch rear earth magnets or neodymium. So you put one, doesn't really matter. Second one, you want it to be opposing. So if it attracts, don't just stick it there. Opposing, this is what makes it alternating. So we're in the opposite direction, the next magnet, no. Be careful with these, by the way, even though they're small and they can still pinch your finger. All right, so we're gonna go opposite direction. opposite we're gonna do this for all six sides one two three four five six coils same opposite and we've got that now for permanent usage wrap this with a little bit of tape and they won't pull off or do that so we're gonna stick this down in there and it should spin nicely I'm gonna put the cover back on and we are ready to go this should spin freely so we're gonna test this out so with the four wire model you use the white wire as your basic neutral or ground. Keep in mind this is alternating current, so it really needs a bridge rectifier to be used for anything important. Charge batteries, etc. All right, we've got those two together. And we are going to be putting our red wire, which has the longest... Uh, course so it provides the most voltage so we are on AC right now because this is an AC alternator I'm gonna put a drill with 3000 rpm on there and do not hold these by yourself I'm not touching it with my hand So we get almost 80 volts. In reverse, it pushes 100 volts. And by the way, this is 1.2 amps. So that single wire is 120 watts. If we go over to the blue wire and test it out, we get less voltage, but other way, going to the black wire. So the red wire is the, the most powerful one on this. The other two, they will still provide you with a couple. They'll still provide you with power. This one alone is very similar, but it's got single coils, so it gives you more current, lower voltage, but these are all on our website, greenpowerscience.com. These magnets, sometimes they're listed on our website. Sometimes we just tell you to go to magnets for less. But this is the C 
secret to the deal. It is a two inch hex piece of bar cut. We sell them if you can find somebody. The other way to make it more powerful is to do the following. So if you take these, this is an extra magnet, and you put it where you double them up, you increase the strength a little bit, but you also bring it closer to the coils. Two will clear the coils with this. There's two magnets there. I think you can fit about three. Ugh. Big difference in how it affects the uh, holding of the rotor inside. So we've got red to white. The reverse seems to work better with um, close to 200 volts. You have three wires. So if we go to blue, Let's check blue out. White's your basic common. So blue is 149 and black is 100. roughly 100. So you could put a bridge rectifier. You would need three of them. One to the common here, which is a white. One there, one there, one there. So you can get about like, I don't know, probably like 200 watts out of this. With a big fan blade, it work great. These motors are from typical fans. You can also buy them on our website, greenpowerscience.com. This is a three-speed fan from a typical box fan. A little bit more difficult because the coils are interwound they're overlapping so you still have four coils complicated setup I'll show you this in a future video I'm your host Dan Rojas thank you for watching enjoy our videos and if you're in a GM for a science project check out our website